you welcome to mathematics class this is the series 2 of our 2020 Becker pass question so let me remind you if you have not subscribed to our youtube channel please do that my simple math on youtube and remember to press the notification button so that you'll be notified of new videos all right let's get to work question 21 simplify 2 over 3 plus 1 over 4 in bracket minus 1 over 5 plus 2 over 3 in another bracket all right so what we'll do is to solve the content of the bracket separately and then we'll subtract them so you have 2 over 3 plus 1 over 4 here the lcm of 3 and 4 is 12 3 is 12 4 4 times 2 8 4 in 12 is 3 3 times 1 3 8 plus 3 11, 11 over 12 and then for this you have 1 over 5 plus 2 over 3 the LCM of 5 and 3 is 15 5 and 15 is 3 3 times 1 3 3 in 15 is 5 5 times 2 10 3 plus 10 13 over 15 all right and I bring the two together 11 over 12 minus 13 over 15 the LCM of 12 and 15 is 60 without you. So 12 and 60, I have 5. 5 times 11, 55. 15 is 60 is 4. 4 times 13, 52. And 55 minus 52 is 3. 3 divided by 60. And then I can say 3 here, 1. 3 is 50, 20. So 1 over 20 is the final answer. Is that taken? Very good. Question 32 says, in an examination, 30% of the candidates failed. If 210 candidates passed, how many candidates wrote the examination? So, we are saying if 30% failed, then for us to know the percentage that passed, we need to say 100% minus 30%. And that gives us 70%. So, 70% passed. Now, for us to know the number of students that passed, the formula ought to be, percentage that passed over 100 times the total number of candidates. But in this question, we don't know the total number of candidates. So let's represent the total number of candidates with C. And now we know the number of students that passed to be 210. And we know the percentage that passed to be 70 over 100 multiplied by total number C, which we don't know. Okay, so 70 times C will give us 70 C divided by 100 which is equal to 210. And by the time I cross multiply, this will give me 70C. Then 210 times 100 will give me 21,000. And then I divide both sides by 70. C is equal to 21,000 divided by 70. This zero cancel the zero. And then 7 in 21 is 3. I'm left with those two zeros. So C is 300. And now say 300 candidates wrote the examination. Is that okay? Good. Question 23 says A piece of clothing length 3 or number 1 over 3 meter is cut from a cloth of length 8 or number 1 over 2 meter. What is the length of the remaining clothes? So all I need to do is subtract 3 or number 1 over 3 from 8 or number 1 over 2. So, 8 on number 1 over 2 minus 3 on number 1 over 3. Alright, I'll change them to improper fraction. 2 times 8, 15, plus 1, 17 over 2, minus 3 times 3, 9, plus 1, 10 over 3. And then the LCM of 2 and 3 is 6. 2 in 6, 3. 3 times 17, 51. 3 in 6, 2. 2 times 10, 20. 51 minus 20 is 31. 31 divided by 6. And then 6 and 31 is 5 on number 1 over 6 meter. So this is the length of the clothes remaining. What's in 24? Evaluate 25 minus root 25. Okay, I know that my root 25 is 5. So 25 minus 5 is 20. That's all. So simple, isn't it? Beautiful. Question 25. 
lesson 25. Angle 91 is an example of A or an dash angle. This is an example of an obtuse angle, and that's because obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. Is that the same? Question 26. To construct angle 30 degrees, it's proper to construct angle dash. Is it 15, 45, 60, 75, 90? So for me to construct my angle 30 degree, I would have to construct and bisect angle 60 degree. So angle 60 degree is the answer. Question 27. How many faces does a cylinder have? The cylinder has two curved faces and one flat face. That gives us three faces. So the cylinder has three faces. Alright, question 28 is asking how many edges does a cube have? You know your cube, a cube of sugar, a cube of maggi. So these are the edges, the line. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. So a cube has 12 edges. Is it taken? Good. Find the perimeter of the triangle below. So when you think of perimeter, you're just looking at the total side, addition of all the sides. So for my perimeter of the triangle, I'm just going to have the length, the breadth, the height, add everything. 14 plus 17 plus 5. And when I add these three, I'll get 36 centimeters. So the perimeter of this triangle is 36 centimeters. Question 30. Find the angle marked edge in the figure below. Now, if this angle is angle 75 degrees, this angle here is also going to be 75 degrees because they are corresponding angles. So if this is 75, then this 75 plus x, give me 180 because these angles are angles on a straight line. So to get x, I'm going to say 180 minus 75 degrees. That is because angles on a straight line is equal to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 75 is 105 degrees. So x is 105 degrees. Is that okay? Very good. Question 31. Calculate the circumference of a circle of diameter 42 cm. Take pi to the 22 over 7. Alright, this is the formula for calculating circumference of a circle. 2 pi r. But in my question, I have a diameter to be 42 cm. So remember that your radius is half of your diameter. So if my diameter is 42, my radius will be 42 divided by 2, and that's 21 cm. Now I can put this value into my formula. C is equal to 2 times 22 over 7 times 21. So 7 year 1, 7 year 3. And 2 times 22 times 3 will give me 132 centimeter. And that's the circumference of the circle. Is that taken? Very good. Alright, question 32 says, find the area of the parallelogram. You have the side. 13, you have this side 4 cm. Now, this arrow signifies that if this is 13, this is also 13. If this is 4, this is also 4. Because the opposite sides of the parallelogram are equal. Alright, but in this question, you know that the formula of a parallelogram is base times height. But we don't know how high, so we have to look for the height. And where is the height? This is the height. So I'm going to draw an imaginary line here to give me another triangle. And then I'll think that that's the triangle I've drawn out here. Imagine that the line is coming this way. So to give us this triangle. I said this is 4 cm, so you have your 4 cm here. And then this will be my height. I have an angle of 60 degrees. So I can use my trigonometry to find the value of H. So if this is my angle, this gives me the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use sine. Sine 60 is equal to opposite H over hypotenuse 4. Is that taken? And my H will be 4 times sine 60. That's if I cross multiply. So H is equal to 4 times 
60. Alright, so because in my options, my answers are in this form, in this sort form. So I'm going to use my special angle for sine 60. I won't use my four figure table now. I'll use my special angle. Sine 60 is the 3 over 2. Okay? But if your answers are in decimal form, then you use the four figure table to get the value of sine 60. Alright, sine 60 is root 3 over 2 using our special angles. So my H will be 4 times root 3 over 2. 2 year 1, 2 year 2. H is 2 root 3. Now that I know the value of H, I can now impute it into this formula for area of a parallelogram. Base times height. My base is 13 and my height is 2 root 3. So 16, sorry, 13, 13 times 2 will give me 26 root 3. Three, and that's the area of this parallelogram. Is that taken? Very good. Question thirty-three. Find the sum of the interior angles of an eight-sided polygon. So the formula for the sum of interior angles of a polygon is n minus two in brackets multiplied by one eighty, where n is the number of sides. So since this polygon is eight-sided, my n is eight. Eight minus two. Multiply by 180. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 times 180 is 1080 degrees. And this is the sum of the interior angle for an 8 sided polygon. Do you understand this? Very good. Alright, question 34. Find the perimeter of a square whose side is 10 cm. So the formula for perimeter of a square is. 4L, 4 times the length. So 4 times 10 will give us 40 centimeter. And that's the perimeter of that square. Question 35. If the volume of a room is 750 meter cube and the area of the floor is 140 meter square, find the height of the room. Okay, the formula for the volume of a room is length times breadth times height. That's taking, and you know that the formula for area is length times breadth, which is 150, isn't it? So if I already know this, what is left is my h, and then in the question I was given area to be 750, which is equal to sorry, the volume now is 750, the area is 150. Okay, so I'm going to put the value of the volume 750. And then the area 150 multiplied by h. This is what I'm looking for. Yes. So h is 750 divided by 150. And then by the time I divide 0 times 0, 75 divided by 15 is 5 meters. So my h is 5 meters. Question 36. Which of the following plane figures does not have a line of symmetry? Height, parallelogram, rectangle, robot, square. So by a line of symmetry, we mean a line that can divide the shape into two equal parts. So if you look at your parallelogram, these are lines of symmetry. Your rectangle has line of symmetry. Your rhombus has line of symmetry. Your square has. But for your kite, the kite doesn't have line of symmetry. So kite is the answer. This is a plane figure that doesn't have a line of symmetry. Is that taken? Good. Question 37. How many sides does a regular polygon have if its interior angle is 720 degrees? Okay, the sum of interior angle is n minus 2 multiplied by 180. So in this question we're giving the sum. 720, we are looking for n, so n minus 2 multiplied by 180, when I open this bracket, 180 times n, 180n minus 180 times 2, 360 degree, and my 360 comes this way, becomes 720 plus 360 is equal to 180n, 180n is equal to 720 plus 360 is 1080, and then I divide both sides by 180. N is 1080 divided by 180, and N is 6. So this polygon has 6 sides. Question 
1038, find the value of x in the figure below. Alright, if you look at this figure, this figure is actually a quadrilateral. It has four sides. And the sum of angles in the quadrilateral is 360 degrees. So I'm going to add all these angles and equate them to 360 degrees. 92 degrees plus 65 degrees plus 2x plus 2x is equal to 360 degrees. 92 plus 52 is 144. 2x plus 2x is 4x is equal to 360 degrees. I mean my 144 to this side it becomes 360 minus 144. 4x is equal to 216. And then I divide both sides by 4. x is 216 divided by 4. And my x is 54 degrees. So 54 degrees is the value of x. In this figure. All right, question 39. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are, as you can see, opposite angles are equal. So are the sides. The sides are also equal. And then the opposite angle, this angle is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle. Opposite angles are equal. Question 40. Given the parallelogram below, find the value of x. Alright, so we know that the sum of angles in the parallelogram is 360 degrees, isn't it? And also we said opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. So if this is 135, B is also 135, and then X will be equal to this angle too. So all we need to do is add 135 plus this 135 and subtract this from 360. So 360 minus 270 will give us 90 and then 90 is the sum of these two angles so i'll divide it by 2 to get the value of x 90 divided by 2 is 45 so x is 45 and this is also 45 degrees is that okay very good so this will come to the end of series 2 thanks for listening and watching but remember subscribe to our youtube channel my simple math and don't forget to press the notification button so that you can be alerted each time we post a new video. Have a nice day. Bye.